Much of the world, though, does think Russia started it. Certainly the United States does. And today, Vice President Joe Biden was in Ukraine, urging Russia once again to back off. As Stuart Greer reports, despite all the warnings, tension on the ground in eastern Ukraine is not easing. As mourners paid their respects to three pro-Russian militiamen who died in clashes on Sunday, there were reports of more bloodshed near the eastern city of Slovyansk. Two men, including local pro-Kiev politician Vladimir Ryback, were found dead, with their bodies showing signs of torture. Furious, Ukraine's acting president has ordered new military operations against pro-Russian militants in the east of the country, calling them terrorists who have now gone too far. The growing number of deaths risks sparking further unrest. In Donetsk, pro-Russian and pro-Kiev demonstrators were locked in a standoff over control for a government building. If the crisis escalates, Russian President Vladimir Putin could use it as an excuse to send in his troops who've amassed along the Ukrainian border. But on a visit to Kiev to announce $50 million in aid, the U.S. Vice President threatened Moscow with greater sanctions if it did not put an end to what he called its provocative behavior. We call on Russia to pull back these forces. No nation should stoke instability in its neighbor's country. And NATO is starting to flex some muscle. While it certainly won't do anything militarily in Ukraine, it has started exercises in the Baltic Sea, deploying five minesweepers in a show of preparedness. All this as Foreign Affairs Minister John Baird began a tour of Eastern Europe to reassure Canada's NATO allies. We want uh, the same thing for the people of Ukraine, peace, prosperity, security, and freedom. And Ukraine has bolstered its claims that Russian special forces are operating in the east of the country. It released photos showing several of the same Russian soldiers serving in the 2008 Georgian War. Proof, says Kiev, that Moscow is behind the unrest. Stuart Greer, Global News, London.